welcome to Front Page Film Studio. I am David Vandy, your host. In today's program, we have uh, a very young Sierra Leonean. And uh, before I introduce her to you, uh, there's this phrase that we always talk about, giving back. Giving back to your community, giving back to your country, giving back to the children. Especially for those of us who are coming from Africa. Most times when we're out here in the diaspora or in the West and we become successful, we say we want to give back. Well, this is exactly what this young lady has done. She is giving back to her people, giving back to the children of the community where she grew up. The community that actually started nurturing her before she came to the United States. And that is Regina Fala Hausman. Welcome to Front Page Film Studio, Regina. Thank you very much. All right, Regina, before we go into details, I just want you to tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. Tell us who Regina um, Fala Hausman really is. Well, um, uh, I came to the United States when I was 17 years old. And um, I've been living here for many years now, about 22 years. And uh, I came in to go to college. Um, I've completed my education. I am a social worker as well as a, a teacher. Uh, I am currently a special education teacher in the middle school. This is my seventh year of teaching. Mm. And um, that's what I'm doing so far. I, I teach in Brooklyn. I live on Staten Island. Oh, that means you commute every day. Yes, about an forth. hour. You must be in love with your job. I love it. I love it. I love the children. I love the um, glow in their eyes when they got it. Mm. When they got it. That, that's what makes my day. Wow. Um, that sounds beautiful. Okay, now, now let's look at what you do back home in Sierra Leone. Like I was telling my, my, my viewers out there, say, um, giving back. You know, you have decided to give back to your community in the form of education. You have decided to give back to your people, helping the younger kids grow up in education. Where did all this come from? How did this all start? Where did you get that inspiration from? Well, I mean, coming from Sierra Leone, that's my, my background, that's my foundation. That's where I got my foundation in education. Um, like I said, I came here, I have already com completed my elementary and high school education and I came here just to go to college. So um, I want to give back be to my country because you know, there's a need there. There's a need for education. Um, we do not have a lot of, uh, most of the schools have been privatized and they are, they are very expensive for, um, for families that are living there. But how this started, this became, was um, in 2012. Um, I went to Africa with my children. I've been living here for some time now. And um, I have two young children. Uh, when I went there last year, the older one was uh, nine years old and the younger one was three. So I took them back home to see my family. And um, so we just went there for a vacation. Um, and uh, my older one said to me that she was very bored. Hmm. So um, I said to her, why are you bored? She told me that she doesn't have any friends there. The, the kids cannot understand her, and she couldn't understand them. The reason being that they could not understand English, spoken English, um, so she couldn't play with them. So we were there for a month, and it was a long time for her mm. to be there and not do anything. So it's like she uh, doesn't she have anybody to play with? Nobody to play with. The children, not that they didn't want to play with her. They wanted to play with her, but there was a lack of... Couldn't speak to them, they couldn't speak to her. And most of the children were between the ages of like five, six to eight years old, and even nine years old. And they could I, not, like her age group... They could not communicate, communicate properly. And did her. you try to find out what was happening? Why couldn't these children actually communicate? Why couldn't they talk to them back in English? That's what, when I, I started speaking to the parents. And because it's the neighborhood kids, and this is where I grew up, you know, some of the, the, um, the parents are either younger than I am or about my age group. Mm -hmm. So I, I communicated with them. I said, why, why is this child not going to... They told me that they are not going to school. I said, why are they not going to school? Because they could not afford it. They could not afford to send their children to school. Like I mentioned earlier, um, they 
the schools have been privatized now. Most of the schools, and it's very expensive to send them. And, and this is the community where you grew up. This is exactly. Most of the parents were uh, either my age group, you know, that the children are not going to school. And the house that you grew up in was this right in house, that community. This is the house that I grew up in. Hmm. And, um, uh, and this is the place where the school is now. But that's how uh, my daughter told me this. And that's the, uh, the research that I found out when as I spoke to the, children, to the parents that they were in the school. So, you know, okay. I was like, okay. You know, that, that was in the back of my head. Nothing came of it. And then when we came back after the vacation, when we came back, my older daughter said to me, Mommy, I don't want to go back. And that broke my heart. Um, she didn't want to go back with me anymore because she was bored. She was there for a month, and she didn't have any friends. And I said, you know, um, the reason that when I talked to the parents, the reason that these children could not speak to you was because they, ha they couldn't go to school. They mm -hmm. weren't in school. So, you know, I started thinking about it, and I said, you know, as an educator here, why can't I do something there? And, you know, this had always been in my mind, in the back of my mind, that I wanted to give back. Uh, but that was, that was the, 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 that green, was the, 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 the green light. The green I got light. the light there, you know. and I said to my children, you know, my daughter, that, you know, you could have been born there. This could, because I was born there, and if I hadn't had the opportunity to come to the United States, she could have been born there and probably have the Be same, in that kind of position. same thing that is going on now, that there's no education. Now, being born in this country, she mm -hmm. has all the resources that she can get. She's doing exceptionally well, and I cannot just move on and go on with my so life. So after, after telling her that, with all the privileges that she's got here, that those kids out there don't have, uh, uh, what was her reaction? Oh, she was like, when I said to her, I said, you know, there's a, a something that we can do. What if we have, let's say, a school there? She was like, oh, that would be wonderful, Mommy. Mm. That would be wonderful. I can um, help you. I can help you. I said, okay, that's great. You know, let's start. And, and how is she going to help? <laughs> oh, well, for, right now, what she's doing is, uh, putting away some of her books that she's used. Mm -hmm. um, you know, actually, she said that she was going to donate her piggy bank, mm. you know, to, to, the, to me, to the school, because she's just a wonderful, wonderful girl. Well, this, this sounds amazing. And, uh, you know, going back and helping those kids, and, you know, your kid talking to you out there, and you've got this idea, so, okay, because I want to take my kids back there, why can't I just get a school and... Uh, you were able to get a foundation, you were able to get a building within a, a space of one year, you were able to get a building. So, so uh, as we talk about the building, uh, I want you also to tell us the name of the school. Well, when, I, when um, my daughter and I had this conversation, I came and my sister, Agnes uh, Fowler Hausman, Fowler mm -hmm. Kamara, um, we, I discussed it with her and she, she had open heart and open hands mm -hmm. to this. She was like, okay, you know, uh, let's do this. You know, I'll be with you all the time. I'll support you, whatever, you know, uh, this is something that you are made for. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. this is something that you can do because I know that you can do this. So she's been a support to me and also a very wonderful friend of mine, uh, Farah Garcia. I, I, uh, she's also a teacher uh, in the public school system in New York City. And uh, she was 100% supportive of this. She has actually volunteered her time to help me write curriculum. She's also uh, put together some fundraising ideas and uh, she's extremely supportive and they've been behind me 100%. So people who are now um, watching us um, through this medium will want to know like, what's the name of the school and maybe they want to contact you. you uh, the name of the school is A Place to Grow and I also have a website it's called, uh, you can look under www, a place to grow, sl, one word, dot org. www, a place to grow, sl, all that is one word, dot org. So if you want to know more about the school, a place to learn, please, a place to grow learning center, please go to this website. And uh, uh, people want to make a donation, maybe they want to contact you. There is, uh, there is a donation page on the website. 
um, you can directly uh, make your donations there. And also, uh, there's a number that you can reach. It's 646-286-1386. Uh, Again, it's 646 646- Two eight six one three eight six. Yes, that is the number you can reach. But again, um, remember, this is about giving back. It is about giving back. What are you giving back? How are you helping your community? Now, um, Regina Fallahausman is making all these tribes. And uh, when we come back, we'll, we'll try to know exactly how she's funding this, how she's getting the funding, how she's getting books, materials to help these kids out there in school. And, and in a space of 12 months, she's got a building that houses the school. How did she acquire all of that single-handedly? A woman with two kids doing this with the help of her kids. Well, ask yourself, wherever you are, do I want to be part of this? Am I a Sierra Leonean? Am I a friend of Sierra Leone? Well, this is an opportunity for me to see how I can help then don't forget to go to the website www.aplacetogrowsl.org. That is very, very important. So when we come back, we will talk more to our guest about how she's able to put all of this together by herself. This is Front Page Film Studio, and I'm David Vandy here in Silver Spring, Maryland. We'll be right back.